Live. Okay, am I live? I don't even know if I'm live. Just check the sound. Had a lot of technical difficulties this morning, so uh, trying to iron it out, even though Erwin Minsky is here. Good morning to Mr. Minsky. Somehow I know you. Uh, I'm not really sure how, but the name sounds very familiar. Erwin Minsky. Good morning. The sound is good. Thank you very much. We're using a different uh, everything this morning. Different. All right? Everything is different. All right. So we'll see what happens. Uh, back in November, when the free agent market opened, it looked like the business of baseball was booming, right? Looked like it was booming. But what happened? Not booming anymore. Why did we have to shut it down? Now, here's something that Will Middlebrooks, remember Will Middlebrooks, former third baseman? Uh, this is what Will Middlebrooks says. He just wishes the truth got reported more than it has been reported. Now, this is what happens. Too many notable sources tweet and write articles that are persuaded and guided by those who employ them or supply them with inside, inside information. Now, I know this, is that people with, uh, who get the inside information, I'm using John Heyman just as an example, all right? Uh, you have to take care of those people who give you the inside information, all right? And sometimes you have to write what's not exactly 100% true, but what is appropriate for the people that help you in your career. And, of course, it's always the little guy who gets hurt, the big guys, the players, the owners. They all have a lot of money, all have a lot of money, but it's the guy, the sports bar in the Bronx, the other guys in Chicago, everybody is suffering. The little guy. Okay? It's always the little guy. Now, the meeting between Major League Baseball and the MLB Players Association the other day. Good morning to Stardog. I'll say hello to everybody in just a second. Wait a second. George is here. George undergoing the uh, sex change operation has decided... To have both. That's right. George will be the first. You've seen gender transplants. You've seen women uh, want to be men. You see men want to be women. But George, from the Roto Imbeciles on Sunday, 6.30, he wants to be both. Right? We'll have our first both. He could participate in a sporting event and win both the men and the women, okay? All right. When is the Legion chat 22 Roto League draft going to start? Uh, we need six teams, so we'll see if we can take care of that. Right now, we're trying to figure out how to work our computer, okay? Yeah, George, the first, this is the, this. you know how the DH is going to be uh, universal? Pretty soon, after George, we're going to have the universal gender. You can be anything you want. That's right. You want to be a female on Tuesday? Go ahead. Want to go into the men's room on Thursday? Well, you can do that now. But uh, you can do whatever you want. All right? Uh, all right. All right. Enough of that nonsense. Let's get to the nitty and the gritty, okay? Cisco Sanchez. He doesn't have a new injury, but Cisco Sanchez, if you're thinking of drafting him, uh, taking a bit longer than originally hoped, he's returning from a shoulder surgery. You see, we're going to limit the amount of nonsense. We're going to start talking nitty-gritty. You got it? Nobody complaining about that one. So, uh, he had surgery done in July. He'll be back by mid-season. So don't think that Cisco Sanchez is someone to get. Greg Mish happens to say that. Max Muncy. I told you the other day he was having problems. He's getting closer to swinging a bat. He could be ready at the start of the season. He tore his UCL. Remember we said Max Muncy was not a player 
that you wanted to get. Now, before we get into more players, uh, here's the deal. On tonight, we have the ale only labor draft. Andrea Lamont and the road old lady, same person. There is sometimes she's Andrea Lamont, sometimes she's the road old lady. Okay, so you know what? Just like George, she has two genders. Now, we're going to be doing, Andrea and I are on the broadcast team tonight on Sirius Radio, along with Kyle and Ray. And uh, everybody knows him as Kyle and Ray. It's like Mariano, you know. We don't have to say their last names. It's Kyle and Ray. And uh, tomorrow, I will be a on Sirius, and I will be uh, doing the uh, auctioneering along with Ray Flowers. So that should be exciting. And then Sunday is the National League only draft. Now, just hear me out for a second, okay? Hear me out. Steve Gardner has done a wonderful job, and more of you in especially only league should be doing the same. Um, he has taken the top 12 free agents and said you cannot draft these in an only league because they're not signed by any team. Okay? You cannot. Now, the, all the others, you can draft them, but if they don't sign with the league that you're in, you don't get them. So, going to have some discounted players. So, I really believe with all these players, as I'm doing the draft guide, the draft values, with all the players that are not going to be in a 12, a lot of National League guys, for sure, the dollar amounts of the top players are going to be cheaper than usual. Now, I've taken... Yeah, I'm sorry. The top players are going to be more expensive, okay? Guys like uh, Tatis, Machado. There are some guys with, you know, Turner. You know the guys I'm talking about, okay? Soto, Acuna. All those guys are going to be top of the line. <laughs> I'm thinking of taking Paul Goldschmidt, okay? I'm thinking of taking Paul Goldschmidt, Bryce Harper, or Mookie Betts. I'm afraid Mookie Betts might be a little bit more than, uh, let's talk about the Cleveland, let's talk about Charlie O'Connell of the San Francisco Bay Area Bombers. Joni Weston of the New York Chiefs. Don't start me about roller derby or I'll put my hands on my hips. Uh, who do you think I should take? Harper or Goldschmidt? And how much do you think they'll go for? Now, George... Oh, what happened to George? He's not here. Probably still in the hospital or something. Uh, with, uh, thanks to Chris Gallo for being there. D.K. Lush, Erwin Minsky, nice to see you, Erwin. Mal Pal, Merrill Horson, Mitchell Horson. Um, yep, Chris Gallo I mentioned. Uh, having a hard time. For, uh, we're having a lot of technical problems this morning. Robert C., Rotorius, Star Dog, Timothy My Hooker. The reason we're having technical problems is because Unholy Toledo's not here. Bryce Harper, probably, yeah, right, probably go for 35. That's what I figured. Harper, 35? Yep. That's, that's going to be more than that. Well, you know what? I don't think Bryce Harper has got the same sex appeal. What do you think Goldschmidt's going to go for? Okay? So Harper, Ms. Irwin and Robert C. both say Harper. What do you think about... Um, Paul Goldschmidt. I think his sex appeal, uh, Andrew... No. Sex appeal, literally? Yeah, you know what, as far as drafting him and paying for him. Anthony D.B. Miller, the Detroit Tiger kid, is back. Good morning. Okay, so Bryce Harper seems to be the consensus, and that's what we'll do. Now, I drafted Barlow as a closer in the TGA. At Goldschmidt, 25. If he goes for 25, I'm, I'm going to grab him. Uh, so anyway, I drafted Scott Barlow. Does anybody... Th now, here's what I did. Follow this. This is in a slow draft. So by drafting Scott Barlow, the Kansas City closer, I eliminated anybody from drafting Josh Stallman right now. Think about this. 
there are certain players who, ha- where's Eddie Ackman? I don't know where he is. So there are certain players who you feel, you don't know if they're going to be the closer or not. But what you do is you handcuff the two guys who are the top two competitors. Scott Barlow and Josh Stallman, for example. Now, by drafting Barlow, it means I'm the only one who can handcuff them. So the value of Josh Stallman went, just went down the drain. Nobody's going to draft him right now. So I'm going to get both. And it, <laughs> Yep, I'm going to get both. So I can handcuff him and be sure that I will have at least one closer out of either one of them. I may get saves out of both, and that may be a little trouble. All right, I know Soto is involved in Detroit. A lot of people don't have a lot of confidence in uh, in Soto. Okay, how do you feel about Soto in Detroit, Mr. Miller? Okay, want to know how you think about that, Anthony D.B. Miller? <laughs> what? I know, I'm peeing into a cup right now, so just leave me alone. Good morning, Rotorius. Zelmo is here. Okay, we're all here. Eddie Heckman's not here. Now, uh, Major League Baseball will be over at some point. The lockout. It's going to be over at some point, right? When the games return on opening day, it'll be, it'll be terrific, especially in Comerica Park. It'll be packed, okay? It'll be packed in Comerica Park, right? Yep. The pace of the game is really at stake here. It's the style of how we play, okay? Uh, great microphone. All right, is it a great mi- is it a great? I'm talking into my phone rather than into the computer. Uh, the pace isn't alone costing baseball its cultural relevance. It's the style. Oh, it's the please. oh shush. It's the pitching changes. The pitchers who step off the mound. The batters who step out of the batter's box. The defensive shifts, which, by the way, favored by every manager, makes them look good. Still, checking pitchers and keeping batters in the box. How about this rule? Anybody talking about this? Keep the batters in the box through their entire at-bat, okay? It won't be mitigated, you know, so things won't be happening based upon analytics. Just stay in the box. How about that? Home runs can be thrilling. So, but triples, to me, are the most exciting thing in baseball. The triple. Okay? So, let's see what happens there. The number of games last year with, the, with at least five pitching changes has risen above 30% over the last few years. Above 30%. Now, that's great for employing pitchers, but it's not great for the game. Okay, so the pitchers behind the starters, pitching staffs now are so deep that starters are usually replaced by another pitcher who can hit in the upper 90s. There was a time where you couldn't even find a pitcher throwing 90 miles an hour. You couldn't find one. Now you get a 90-mile-an-hour pitcher replaced by a 95-mile-an-hour pitcher. How are we doing in the chat room? Don't see a lot of action. Not a lot of action. So you got heat. You got stuff. You got three true outcomes. Whoa. Okay, so let's see what happens here. Baseball has got to come back and make some serious changes. Okay? Basketball introduced the shot clock because fans get tired of watching the four-corner offense. Remember that? Major League Baseball, the games have never been longer on average. Now, I don't care about that, okay? Star dog likes Barlow in Kansas City. Thank you. I'm going to try to take uh, 
uh, Stormont and Starborg, just in case. Scooble versus Erod versus Sonny. You're talking about Sonny Gray? Uh, I'll go with Sonny Gray. Scooble may be better in the long run, Rotorius, but I th- assume you mean Sonny Gray. Okay? Okay. Three hours or more on a Tuesday night in June with 90 games on the... No, nah, I'm sorry. It doesn't work. Football, baseball, you got so much to choose from. Baseball's going to have to do it. And, of course, Manford and the other owners... Now, listen to this carefully. I have Mark Melanson. I took him. I took Melanson in the TGIF uh, LGBT League, whatever that is. I don't even know. Justin Mason's League. Now, this is important. You won't hear this anywhere. But Manford and the other owners, who would you rather, who do, who would you rather punch in the, in the face? Manford or Putin? Take a choice. Manford and the other owners, and listen to this. They, I like Sonny Gray. They never cared about missing games in the first month of the season. And here's the reason why. This is what you come here for. The reason is their TV deals, about $3.8 billion, are expected to be paid out. And here it is. As long as no more than the first month of the regular season is canceled. Okay? You can't punch both. Who would you rather punch, Erwin? Manfred... Or Putin, okay? So as long as uh, as they start in May, they're okay, okay? They're counting on you. They're counting on the fans to bash the players as greedy millionaires. They're hoping the, payers miss their pay- the players miss the paychecks. Players will you lose about $20 million for every day in the regular season. Now, the Angels, Diamondbacks, Reds, and the Tigers. I got to get something to drink. This is going to be a tough day. Okay, Leonard, I'll help you. I have it. Okay, Angels, Diamondbacks, Reds, and the Tigers. The owners of those teams that I found out opposed the luxury tax increase to $220 million. Now, MLB also... Proposed including player meal money in the calculation of the luxury tax. And that really rubbed the players the wrong way. So you see, this is what we're up against, okay? This is what we're up against. It's really crazy, but this is what we're up against. Now, in the spring of 2019, Brody Van Wagenen made a bold move. They kept Pete Alonso on the opening day roster. A decision looked like it was going to cost the Mets a year of control over the uh, future star. Okay? Uh, uh, Chris Gallon wants to know if I'm okay. Do I need mouth? Yo, mouth. Yes, I do. Okay? So the Mets chose to uh, take Alonso and keep him in the minor leagues until mid April a strategy that many teams employ and one that the players are fighting against in the labor thing. But Van Wagner chose to break camp with Alonzo on the roster, setting him up to become a free agent in 2024. Now, the lockout has scrambled. A lot talked about, um, oh, uh, who's the Japanese pitcher, Andrea? Come on. Hitter, pitcher, what's his name? Uh, Otani. Otani. Same thing with Otani. If this workout uh, stoppage, lockout, stretches into 15 days into the regular season, Alonzo will lose enough service time to see his free agent push back to 2025. Okay? Now, the only other players in the similar situation, we talked about Otani, also, Jack Flaherty, the other player in the same situation. How about that one? Jack Flaherty. So Alonzo could lose millions 
and see the course of his career altered big time. Do I sound better now, Chris? Thank you for, uh, hey, listen, I appreciate when you say I love the show. Also appreciate when you think I could make an improvement. So there you go. Guest Retha, anyone tell nothing to man up? Yeah, that's the part are the Pittsburgh Pirates a small market franchise? I don't think so. They just don't want to spend the money. That's the classic team in Major League Baseball, in my opinion, who has held back the Marlins, of course. That's why Derek Jeter decided to quit. So there you go. Okay. Uh, so I'll, I'll tell you, and in this, uh, uh, Justin Mason league, Bobby Witt was drafted high. Bobby Witt has, was drafted high. I mean, Bobby Witt hasn't had a chance to be around many players that he called teammates in 2021. I mean, first uh, look, Bobby Witt. And 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 uh, Jonathan Baldwin, uh, Kyle Isbell, M.J. Melendez. Those four are part of the Royals' forty-man roster, and they were locked out by Major League Baseball after the collective bargaining agreement expired. So Bobby Witt will have to wait to see them in person. Royals fans will have to wait. Any hope? of seeing Witt next month are on hold because of the lockout. But Witt will join other minor league players when those games begin in April. Okay? April. Those games will begin in April. Now, he can't do anything until then. In a conference call on uh, earlier in the week, I heard Dayton Moore said he hopes Witt and other minor leaguers can keep their attention on the games. So let's see what happens. Okay? Now, Bobby Witt thinks I'm his cousin. All right? He does. He called me a couple of weeks ago. He said, are you my cousin? But didn't you change your first name? I said, what are you talking about, Bobby? Wasn't your first name Dim? Okay. Andrea didn't get it because she didn't laugh. Uh, so they're going to have to wait next month because of the lockout. And we'll see what happens to that. It's important. They got to stay focused. They got to keep their timing. He's 21. He knows he can concede, uh, succeed at the highest levels. 65 games last year. Bobby Witt hit 285, 24 doubles. 17 homers. How much are we paying for Bobby Witt this year? Come on, chat room. Wake me up. Keep me alive. Help me going. How much Daniel Ferrara is here? Thank you, Daniel. How much are we paying Timothy, my hooker? Thank you, Timothy. How much are we paying for Bobby Witt this year? How much? Is it $10 or is it more? Are we paying $10 for Bobby Witt? Or are we paying less than $10 for Bobby Witt? Over or under? Now, a picture that has been forgotten about, that you got to pay attention to. He could be a steep sleeper. Spencer Turnbull, okay? Remember he threw a no-hitter in Seattle on May 18th? And the next minute, poof, he was gone. Robert C. says Bobby Witt will go higher than 10. Everybody says over. Star Dog says 16. Rotorius says Bobby Witt is the next Bichette. Whoa. So Spencer Turnbull is a good pitcher. He had Tommy John surgery 25 days later and has not been seen again. So... Let's see what happens. The Tigers were playing their best baseball. They had a winning record, final five months of the season, thanks to uh, Mr. Miller, okay? Wit over Varsho. So don't forget Turnbow. 
Derek Turnbull. Don't forget him, okay? Everybody got that? And it would be great if Turnbull could communicate with the trainers, but he can't do that. That's the dumbest thing ever. You can't communicate with your trainers and your doctors. How stupid is baseball? What they should do is stop the lockout, play the game, and continue to negotiate. Does anybody think that'll work? Don't these players and owners know what they have done to the fans? The Atlanta Braves um, said before the lockout that they plan to have a larger payroll than last year. Well, but they haven't said how much larger. The franchise 2021 per- financial performance, five hundred about $70 million in revenue, $111 million in operating profit before depreciation and amortization. That's not so bad, okay? I'm sorry, it's it's, uh, Spencer Turnbull, right? Did I say Derek Turnbull? Who's Derek Turnbull? Which (laughs) Turnbull am I talking about? Spencer. Uh, Spencer, sorry. (laughs) Don't confuse me, Rotorius, okay? (laughs) Lock out, end the lockout and negotiate. Yeah, Spencer, all right, there you go. Thank you, Anthony D.B. Miller, the Tiger fan, all right? You see, it's not just a podcast. You got to learn stuff from the from the chat room. And by the way, I will be doing tomorrow at, I believe, four o'clock. Check. I'm going to be doing a forty-five minute speech on the state of fantasy sports uh, on the first pitch forum. The Baseball HQ, they're having a bunch of videos, and I'm one of them, and I'm solo, and I'm going to be doing the state of the game. So tune in, the state of the game. If you want the link, it'll be here in the chat room, okay? I'll put the link in the chat room. It's Baseball HQ. They haven't even advertised it. I don't know what they're doing. I will tell you, if there's nobody in the chat room, I'm leaving. But And that's the state of the game. You would think that with all this, they'd be advertising it. I didn't even know it was tomorrow. I didn't know, and I'm a guest speaker. I mean, come on. I advertise our Sunday show all week. You got to do it. Mitchell Larson says, after you end the lockout, start the season, you replace all the players with replacement players. <laughs> so, look, the Braves' re- revenue last year topped their previous high in 2019. Unbelievable. So, here's the deal they are trying to accommodate a new Freddie Freeman contract. And that, uh, look, that's the reason that they're claiming their salary structure is going to be higher. MLB executives are clueless, okay? So that's what they say. Would the Braves spend as high as $180 million on players this year? Only time will tell. Wow. Braves are getting close. So the $180 million, it would be below the luxury tax threshold. It would have ranked eighth among 30 MLB playoff teams last year. The Braves, the Braves last year ranked 13th. I think there's no way they're not signing Freddie Freeman. No way. It's like Marilyn Mitchell breaking up. You can't do that. It's like Marilyn Mitchell watching different, uh, coming into different chat rooms, different podcasts. So the the Braves normally don't talk about their salary. They had 10 players 
whose 2022 salaries have been set, Charlie Morton, Will Smith, Kirby Yates, Travis Dorno, Manny Pena, Ozzy Albies, Marcelo Zuna, Orlando Garcia, Ronald Acuna. And by the way, how many people think that Trevor Bauer is going to pitch this year? Let's just get it out there, okay? Andrea was with Greg Ambrosius and um, Tom Kucinich on their show, and they didn't ask him about Trevor Bauer. Just one little segment, a little mention. Can Andy Rendon turn this year? Turn back? Absolutely, he could be a big player. Will Smith, he's going into it, with the, but they got so many people. There are so many possibilities that that's the one thing about Will Smith. The moment he falters, Will Smith can be replaced, right? They have nine players. Atlanta's got nine players eligible for arbitration, and that has to be settled. I mean, come on. That's the big thing. When it comes back and there's three weeks ready, you've got the Braves got nine players. And the arbitration is is actually a meeting, right? Mitchell Horston says Bauer will pitch, and he's a solid pickup. Right. Yeah, well, yeah. That's what Mitchell Horston says. So some players in Atlanta are going to be filled by uh, some positions, be filled by young players. I'm telling you, Ian Anderson, he'll make the minimum. He's a very important player because to sign Freeman... You're going to have to get some minimum salaries. Anybody else think that Trevor Bauer is going to be a solid pickup? Okay? So, pretty hard to believe, okay? Now, the Braves looking to sign, uh, uh, so they have to make a decision on Freeman before they go after either Rosario or Solar or any one of those guys who was with him last year. I don't think Peterson will be involved, okay? Okay, now let's just end it. We're talking about the White Sox. As Major League Baseball and the Players Union gave themselves more time, it still didn't work, okay? Uh, unbelievable. They had uh, the most of their 93-win team intact from last year. I love... The White Sox team, love it. By the way, in that uh, TGI, uh, whatever that thing is, I picked up Austin Meadows. Now, how do you like Austin Meadows? I picked him up. I project him for at least 25 home runs, five to eight stolen bases. A little concerned about his batting average. Left-handed hitter, big guy, a lot of power, okay? Mitchell Arson is not... Inviting Trevor Bauer to dinner. Okay, that we know. Okay, you haven't invited me to dinner either, Mitchell. All right, so the White Sox have circled to see what a rebuild would look like. This is a good team. That great bullpen. A trade of Kim, of Craig Kimbrell. Every we too go to Mitchell Hartson's and have coffee and bagels. We did yes, go. we did. Sorry. Uh, yeah, we get a two-hour show, right? Two-hour show, Sunday, Lady and the Legend. Forgot about that. We got, here's what we got. Tonight we got from 7 to 12. I'm staying up till 12 o'clock. Malpal says Meadows, well, yeah, he hasn't hit against lefties. That's for sure, okay? But he didn't, last year he had 27 home runs. So uh, we have tonight... 7 to 12, American League only. Tomorrow, 7 to 12. Whoa, at night. Now, tomorrow, about 4 o'clock, I'll be on the base on the Baseball HQ doing my 45-minute speech. Tune in if you can. Okay? Saturday night, Ray Flowers and I are going to be doing the auctioneer. Uh, who plays first base for... The, for the Braves, if Freeman leaves, they'll get somebody else. Chris Olsen's the man I'm hearing. Okay. And then Sunday we got our show. 
We start at 7 in the morning till 9. Then we rest up, and then I do a draft at 7 o'clock at night until 12. Are you kidding me? Mal Pal agrees and says it's going to be Matt Olson. Okay? No. The White Sox are set, but they still need some players. Their second baseman on the top of their depth chart could be improved. It's Lurie Garcia. They might trade Craig Kimbrell for a second baseman. They... Um... They will platoon left-handed inning Gavin Sheets and Andrew Vaughn. You got that? So, Chris Bryant, they're all out there. As good as the rotation looks, with left-hander Carlos Rodon going, uh, uh, it's still Jolito, Lynn, Cease, Kopech, and Dallas Keuchel. I'm a little concerned with Kopech, only two pitches, and Dallas Keuchel. Ronaldo Lopez is number six. So include him in your thoughts. And there you go. So uh, that's the White Sox. And finally, there's one deal that I'm, I'm hearing rumors about. Luis Castillo, Cincinnati Reds, going to the Angels for Joey Adele and more. Bleacher Report looked at this and... Um, I don't know. Castillo was off limits, according to Buster Only at one point. But all the rumors are out there. Joey Adele and, let's say, a guy like Sam Backman to the Reds. And for Castillo. Ah, to the Angels. To the Angels. Yeah, Castillo to the Angels. For Joey Adele. And maybe more. Okay? Castillo, one of the best starting pitchers in baseball. 3-7 ERA. Joined the league in 2007. Adele and Backman have bright futures. So, and they could trade Adele and put Brandon Marsh right in there. Right? Adele, very underrated. Drove in 26 runs in 35 games. We all know about this. Backman was their 2021 first-round pick. He was a big piece drafted in 2021. Where the Angels drafted, remember, all pitchers. Okay? All pitchers. So the thing is with uh, Backman, he throws a heater. His command on his changeup is crucial. But he could be a pretty good pitcher in the future. And that just about does it, everybody. It's been a little bit tough this morning for a couple of reasons. One, being up with Andrea at 5 a.m. ain't easy. Oh, please. Andrea, love you. Anthony D.B. Miller, Daniel Ferrara, D.K. Luce. Thanks for being here, Erwin. We'll let you know about the league. Mal Pal, Merrill, Mitchell, Rotorius, Star Dog, Timothy, my hooker, Zelmo. And me. And the great Lamont. We'll talk to you don't forget, no, Adele is not a sleeper. He's really been hyped up. He's Don't not. forget, tomorrow, Baseball HQ at about 4 o'clock. I think 4 to 4.45. And um, don't forget Sunday morning. And tonight. One thing at a time. The Lady in the Legend, we need your calls. No. We need your calls. Lady in the Legend, all okay? right? The calls, Triple Eight. 963-2682. Okay, you got that? Now, here's my number. If you can't get through to the Baseball HQ and you want to get through, call me on the 516 number coming up right now, and I'll see if I see if I can get on. Somehow, they sent me everything yesterday, and I get scared. 516-353. What's the number? Yeah, 268, there you go. Okay, everybody, that's my number if you need me. Erwin Minsky, you're the best. Thank you. Hope to see you again in the chat room. Thanks, everybody.